Hey guys, I wanted to make a quick video talking about why creating your own niche site is much better than buying real estate. And in the world of business and investing and all this kind of crazy stuff, you have all kinds of people from all different walks of life and all different expertises. And I can sit here and I can confidently say that regardless of what walk of life you come from, right, or what experiences you've had in your life, everybody listening to this can absolutely create a niche site and make money from it that will replace their job, give them passive income, and create, and just really flourish, honestly, create more income than they have in their life. Right now, I have an example here of two pieces of real estate that are about the same value. Here we have a house that has three bedroom, two bathroom with 1,200 square feet. And here we have another house that is about almost 1,200 square feet. It's 1,194 square feet, also three bedroom, two bathroom in the same area, okay? And I want to line this up here and give you guys an example uh, because a lot of people are not aware. They're always trying to figure out how to make money the hard way. Creating a niche site is what I call the easy way, and I'll explain what I mean by this, all right? When you buy real estate, right, People think it's the best thing in the world. It's it's not exactly. It really isn't. And to put things into consideration, the reason why this idea of buying real estate actually exists is because the rich people use it to decrease their tax bill at the end of the year. That's the reason why. Okay, people like me and you, regular people, should, in my opinion, should not be buying real estate. Unless you're buying a house for yourself and your family to live in, it doesn't really make sense to invest in real estate because the money is too slow. And I'll explain what I mean, okay? At least compared to blogging, that is. So this house here, okay, um, is uh, $1,900 a month in rent, okay? I want you to think from the owner's perspective, the person who's the landlord, Okay, if somebody's going to come in and rent this place, how much money is this gonna guy going to walk away with in terms of profit at the end of the month? Well, the question is, let's figure out what the mortgage is. So let's find a, a house that's a very similar in the area. Okay, $224,000 or $225,000. Let's figure out what the mortgage on that is with a suitable down payment. So here, if we look, the monthly cost for uh, principal and interest uh, HOA, no HOA, home insurance, all this property taxes comes out to 13, 600, uh, 13, 363. Now this is not including the, uh, down payment. Okay. And you could actually, I don't know where it is here. There's a section where you can actually check how much you can pay um, per month, depending on the down payment, but a down payment like this, if the house is, we could even do mortgage calculator, for a property. Let's actually do this. Okay, so the loan amount, let's say, is let's say the down payment is $25,000. So that would make it a $200,000 uh, loan. And 30 year fixed on an interest rate, let's just say that is the current they say is, is seven, but let's just go six and a half. Let's go a smaller interest rate payment. So let's go six and a half. Okay, that means the monthly payment here is $1,267. Okay, so that's how much the owner is going to pay aside from property taxes, aside from home insurance, aside from any kind of maintenance and repairs. I want, I want you to understand this, that this alone is the pr pr price of just simply the mortgage, okay, which is $1,267 for this property, let's just say. Now we have property tax. We have uh, insurance, home insurance. We also have, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, repairs, okay? If if let's just say you're renting this house out to somebody, those are going to be the costs that you're going to have to pay, okay? And let's say you're, at the end of the day, you're charging 1900 Well, if we take property tax, if we take repairs, repairs is equal to about 1% of the property per year, which is about 1% of 225000 That comes out to 2250 So you add another 2000 uh, for the year, which would Roughly be, if I just whip out the calculator here, um, 225,000 uh, multiplied by 0 0.01, 2,250 uh, divided by 12, that would be an extra $187. And then also, that's 187 on top of the 126.7. Okay. And that is so far with just mortgage and property tax. Okay. 
Then also, like I said, you have home insurance. Home insurance could be an extra eight, nine hundred dollars every year. It could be a thousand. It could be, you know, it, it depends. But let's just say, based on the value, let's just say it's eight hundred and ninety dollars. Okay, so that's eight hundred and ninety. Okay, divided by twelve is equal to seventy four. So seventy four extra dollars on top of the fourteen fifty four a month. Okay, which comes out to fifteen twenty eight now. So fifteen twenty eight, and then you have um, we we said insurance, we said uh, repairs. Did we say insur- home insurance? We did property tax. Okay, let's just say let's just say maybe I'm missing something, but let's just say it comes out to fifteen twenty eight a month. Okay, how much are you collecting from the tenant? You're collecting nineteen hundred. Okay, so nineteen hundred minus fifteen twenty eight, that comes out to three hundred and seventy two dollars. So you effectively locked yourself into a thirty year mortgage for this property to make three hundred and seventy two dollars. But are you really making three hundred and seventy two dollars a month? The answer is absolutely not. You forgot about Uncle Sam, the big guy. And we're also assuming only if that the repairs every month, if you have a good tenant, Every year, excuse me, and the repairs don't exceed 1% of the property value. But you know some people could be some bad tenants. You could have some bad emergencies. Maybe the house has termites. Maybe there's a leak in the roof. Maybe whatever, right? There's a lot of bad things that can go wrong with properties, right? Maybe, uh, you know, something happens. There's a leak coming in from the window. Maybe some pump needs to be replaced. Whatever the case may be, this is assuming at the very bare minimum only 1% of the property value per repairs per year assuming you have a decent tenant, right? You would be clearing 372. Now subtract, you have to also subtract taxes, okay? So let's just say you're paying taxes of 15%. Obviously, it depends on people's bracket, but let's say 372, we multiply this by 12, you're walking away with a $4,000 profit plus 467 for the year, for 64 for the year. We multiply this by 0.015, I believe 15%, uh, 15%, no, point, point 0.15, right, for the interest, and that comes out to, or not the interest, excuse me, property tax, six, uh, not property tax, the taxes on the income that you made, which comes out to 669 Now, the taxes would is actually a little bit higher, um, but since you're state of Florida, let's just say, for example, comes out to that. So, really, what you're made about is about $3,900, okay, for renting this. And like I said, if everything goes safe and lucky, you're going to be doing this for 30 years. And then 30 years, after 30 years, you potentially own it. But the profit, year by year by year, assuming you're not dead yet, is $3,900 to run this whole entire operation to get headaches and calls in the middle of the night. Your tenant says, hey, I need this fixed. Hey, I need this. Hey, I need that, etc. $3,900, okay? This is why I say real estate is for the poor, not for the rich. Now, you guys are going to listen to Robert Kiyosaki and all this craziness. Um, but the reality is, I mean, he made his millions off of selling his books and his courses, not um, his real estate. Let's be positive about that. He just dumps his millions into real estate and provides more money back so he doesn't have to pay his high taxes. And he talks about this. But regardless, 3900 a year. Now, if you create a niche site today, Okay, I can guarantee you that you can make more than three thousand nine hundred within the first six months if you're doing it properly. Obviously, if you're following other people's guides and things like that, that might be a different circumstance. But within the second or third year, you can do a hundred times this. You can make three hundred grand in the first three years, and that's not rare for successful bloggers. That's not rare at all. There's a lot of people who are successful in the real estate industry, but this is what their income looks like at the end of the year per property assuming that they're, you know, doing the whole mortgage setup, okay? And also, not to mention, if you're self-employed and you're deducting a lot of things from your taxes, uh, you're not even going to get a loan for this. You'd need the cash up front uh, to make this happen. So you just cut 50% of the people right there. So this is my explanation, and I'm willing to debate with anybody on this about uh, real estate. And real estate is actually not that good of a income generator for a lot of people. It's really not. Unless you are a multimillionaire, right, making millions of dollars a year or hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, and you need to buy real estate so you don't have to pay taxes 
on that income, that's a different story. But if you are a blogger, or if you are, let's just say you're uh, making uh, good money from your wage, from your salary, and you're thinking, hmm, what should be my next side project, my next money maker? Should I put some money into a real estate project, or should I put my money into uh, blogging or something like that? Go with what's easier. Always people like to find what's harder, and they go with what's harder. This is much harder than starting a niche site. I mean, I, we got videos on the YouTube channel. We're going to create more videos. We're going to create courses. We're going to show you guys everything around this stuff about creating niche sites. But creating a niche site is very simple. You create content on the website. You sell products, right? You give affiliate marketing products. You do affiliate marketing products. You get AdSense money, right? And all that income adds to more than the 300 bucks that you're going to be making a month off of a real estate project, Right? And once again, it is passive income. You're not going to get a tenant calling you up in the middle of the night from your blog saying, hey, I need this fixed. I need that fixed. This needs to be whatever. You're not going to deal with things like that. Guess what? You're just going to be making what I call passive income. And passive income is great because after you do the work necessary, that income is like clockwork every single month. It shows up in your bank account every single month. The only reason I'm able to make videos like this today and talk to you guys about this is because I make passive income. Because if I wasn't, I'd be stuck at a job somewhere or I'd be working with a boss somewhere and killing myself working every single hour of the day, okay, and working, basically trading my time for money. If you're tired, tired, excuse me, of trading your time for money, make sure you start your first business, you start your first website. And your website, the beautiful thing about this is when you create a niche site, at the bare minimum, if nobody buys a product from you ever, if they never click your affiliate link ever, you're still making money off of them. Why? Because you have AdSense or the equivalent to it, whether it be a Zoic or whatever platform you're going to use to place ads on your website and make money off of that. So you tell me, what's a better business? It's very simple, okay? And I'm speaking from somebody who had bought real estate thinking that it was good, and I made a big mistake, okay? In fact, that was probably the biggest mistake of my financial career is as a little guy, not a multimillionaire, but as a little guy buying real estate thinking that it would be a good thing to do and it wasn't it was a waste of time and I did regret it, and that's why I sold it all but the point is is that uh, completely completely I would say a hundred percent of the time uh, do what's easier in this case and what's easier and faster if, if money is your goal if making money is your goal okay then real estate is not the wave I'm just gonna keep it real people had to do real estate 40 50 years ago as their primary business and things like that and you know escape the nine to five grind doing real estate because that's what they had we have technology we have the internet we have chat GPT we have computers we can make money off of creating content by writing blogs can you imagine that we don't have to set up houses and structures and frames and repair roofs to make money. No, we don't have to do that. All we have to do is write an article, a few articles, create a website, spend 12 bucks a, uh, a year on a domain, spend 50 to, to $15 on hosting, right? Using Rocket Web Builder. Shout out to rocketwebbuilder.com, okay? Rocketwebbuilder.com, anywhere from 13 to 15 bucks a month, all the way up to $59 a month for three websites, okay? That's what you have to do. You don't have to spend 200 grand or mortgage, down payments, get locked into different you know commitments to try to make money. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out. Bye.